Welcome to Attack of Opportunity. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Attack of Opportunity, where we take the chance to take a look, look at ourselves, take a look at other people, look around the room, look into the community now. We are expanding and talking to other content creators at this point in the show because I can keep hiring cast members, but, you know, and we do have new ones, and you will get their interviews soon. But it's much more fun for me and for everyone and for you to rub elbows with the movers, the shakers, the people that are coming up on their way up kind of thing. And for my personal favorite choice, people like this guy right here that are doing something that, that we consider original. And what am I talking about? We are talking to Vince today, one of the movers and shakers behind a very original Twitter, which has become a podcast, which has become, well, we'll get into it. Do you, are you familiar with the D&D &D grandma? This guy has a family sitting down to dinner then they pull out dice and grandma doesn't go off and have a nap she's in there she's kicking boots taking names swinging swords i love this idea <laughs> vince <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show today oh thank you for having me man so i don't know if you're familiar with the show well i do because you told me earlier but um first question that we love to ask all of our you know but we usually start with how did you know that you were a geek and a nerd one of us but of course we want we want to see grandma where is she why isn't she here <laughs> i asked for grandma I went, oh i guess her but we don't have i know no i know she's she's off talking to uh, perkins and mercer and cutting a deal you know and, <laughs> oh man take, if only <laughs> take, taking you along for the ride right is that how it's going that's okay Wouldn't that be some... we'll take what we can get and we're happy to have vince today so how Thanks. did you first know that you were a geek a nerd one of us one of us that that I knew that I was a geek. Um, I guess that there was, I never really had a moment where I knew I'm a geek right now. It's just like I had several <laughs> geekdoms as I was growing up, just things that I started getting into. I guess my first geekdom ever I considered to be pro wrestling when I was a kid. I used to, I, I loved it. I watched all the old school stuff. Then that started to evolve as I discovered comic books, as uh, I was always into 80s cartoons. So the geek seeds were planted at a very young age. Um, as far as the geek of tabletop gaming goes, that's fairly new. Uh, I only got into this maybe five or six years ago. Um, no, no, I, I, I'm feeling you. I, I kind of skipped a lot of the comics and went right to like 80s cartoons, like the X-Men 80s cartoon. You remember that one? <laughs> well, yeah, I remember that. that. I love Absolutely. the theme music. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so the, you're already answering my next question. You know, was there a defining moment for you or a gateway drug? And you're saying 80s cartoons and the pro wrestling. Now, does this got you into playing those pro wrestling video games? Because I remember oh, yeah. we used to play a bunch of those and we would be, there was a game, I can't remember the name of it, it was one for the one of the old Xboxes, and there was a move you could do, and it was a counter, they called it reversal. Okay. And somebody was grappling you and doing something, and you pick the guy up, and if you hit the button at the right time, you would completely reverse the move. And I got to uh -huh. a point where we're bouncing up and down on the couch with our then Star Wars DM for D6, <laughs> Doug, and he's like, reversal! And he just, he just owned you, and we're like... Oh man, can we go back to playing like D and D, where we are Star Wars, where you just kill us properly? You know. <laughs> oh no, my my friend, I, I forget also the name of it, but it was on a PlayStation, and it was a WWE game where you could. It was like one of the first ones where you had a lot of detail in creating original characters, where you could go in and create your own wrestlers. So my friends and I, we all made ourselves. I had a character, oh, and yeah, all, all my yeah. friends had a characters, and then we'd all play <laughs> as ourselves. It was it was craziness. Oh yeah, no, but it was no. a lot of fun. No, I I, uh, I remember something like that, and you like every, we just loved finding the guys that had the face paint or the or the lucha nobre masks <laughs> and type of thing, put them on there. And, um, so you're enjoying the '80s cartoons, you're um, you're playing wrestling games, and you're following wrestling, big part of the childhood, of right? Yeah. Um, yeah. which I like to refer as modern day gladiatorial arena combat. If you really think about it, you know it is kind of staged and just like the gladiators, it's just you know just those little you know cestus sword short swords, and we're good. Well, of course, it, it's 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 television for kids. You know they got to fold into the handle, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, how long have you been a gamer? You know, like beyond the video games, picking up the D20, you know that kind of thing. What uh, what was your first? Tabletop RPG, I suppose, is the question I'm digging for. Uh, I came in um, right 
or after Fifth Ed was released. Um, because a bunch of my friends were getting a game together to kind of kick off the, the new system, the new fifth edition system. Mm -hmm. And um, when um, when I was in high school and I was in college, I knew a lot of people who played. Uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you what edition it was at the time. I wasn't in the world uh, in that world yet, but I was always curious. I was always curious. What is this? This Dungeons and Dragons game. It's, but um, I out of the people I knew who were playing, these weren't people that I wanted to join a game with. So it wasn't until fairly recently where I had a group of close friends who wanted to get a game together. And I was at a barbecue and I heard them talking about scheduling a time. And I just said to myself, you know what? It's now or never. So I just turned oh, yeah. around and went, you know what? I, th I think I'd like to get in on that. And um, played my first game and I never looked back. I was writing for my own campaign six months later. Oh, that's great. Like it is for me and for a lot of it's all about playing with your friends. Now, there are really engaging and fun people that you can meet at random in the community and share this love. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, there's there's nothing like, you know, with the friends or whatever. Uh, I'm very proud to announce that my wife, who has been our silent partner and executive producer for Dicewise Entertainment and has always <laughs> supported the Rollmongers Podcast Network, is now auditioning and have done some cameos in our Dice Before Dishonor podcast, the All Cavalier Party, that's doing Excellent. Pathfinder's War for the Crown. And she was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> she ate, ate and drank the wrong stuff that's something that just really makes her stomach settle well and she she's doing her thing and she's playing and we're like stop edit this honey you know and then she's getting mad at roll 20 because she hadn't you know she games with me alone but we sit in the living room and like roll 20 and hero labs up there but it's a lot of narrative right so to put her microphone okay. in front of her and like okay you know click on this honey and she got a little um she was nervous it was adorable of course the guys just loved her and they want her back <laughs> Um, so next thing I know, she's making up, you know, second edition characters for our launch of Pathfinder Second Edition, and we were looking at, uh, we've been looking at Hell's Vengeance, the evil campaign, and she's like, I've never played an evil character, and I'm like, oh, I'm a DM, I do it all the time, they're fun, you know, yes, 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 <laughs> in, 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 girl gamers rock, you know, we need more. Um, yeah. We have a few lady cast members, but they're few and far between, and only in a smattering because of their schedules, but you've got... You've got the wife, your wife involved, the family. You know, let's talk about your wife and you. So there you are, six months in. You're writing campaigns and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. How did you get the family involved? Because I'm assuming that would happen before you went on the net. Uh, that was a slow process. Uh, my my wife joined first with my sister and my brother-in-law, and they had heard me talking about it, and they were all sort of like okay well this sounds interesting and then one day my brother-in-law said you know what i think i'd like to try and my sister came along for the ride and i kind of hoodwinked my wife into being the third player that way we had a somewhat full table mm -hmm. and i ran just like a little intro kind of beginner game for them and uh they wanted to get to they loved it and they wanted to play again and i think it was actually my wife's idea who said i think this would be really good for your mother and at first, I thought she was out of her mind. I'm like, no way. Mom's not going to do this. And uh, for the hell of it, I, we, the, my sister and I sat down with my mother. and like, would you like to try? And um, my mother always likes to say she did it on a lark just to say, you know what? It's a night with my kids. We're going to be playing a game. It's sure, I'll give it a try. But man, the bug bit her pretty hard. She got hooked on that first game. And... Um, it's it's been a, a hell of a ride ever since man just watching her de develop into a player it's been amazing oh that's cool and like uh i don't see this as exploitation like you see the kids that do videos and their kids out and rapping and now they're big on youtube and it's like yes tommy you've paid for your college 10 times over you know this kind of thing the the photos that you post you know what i mean and you're just like we love doing this and it, it's almost it's like people put up pictures of them swimming with the dolphins and all this vacation on Facebook and look, I'm winning at life. And your photos are really heartwarming. They're like just everyone at the table going, oh, hey, we're playing. Yeah, go away, <laughs> sit down, go get my beer, you know, and back at it type of thing. It's, it was one of the things that drew, drew my attention to you. Um, it was this great shot of you guys all leaning on the table and there's grandma, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's really good. She, she, um, um she's got this look on her face and you can tell that she's you know she hasn't been conjoled into it you know mm -hmm. she has a sparkle in her eyes like i really don't know what's happening 
but she's got this grin like yeah i'm doing this you know it's really great picture. you can see it on the deity grandma so okay so you're playing exactly you're playing you know there you are you're playing and you're going along there but now the big question i mean that's fine that's happiness you're you know get the family together barbecue and all this kind of stuff um the jump the leap to not playing because it's not game night and watching things on youtube or whatever and saying guys let's buy microphones let's get the yeti out let's you know let's share this with the world that's a big decision that's a big leap what uh what started that we've already credited your that... wife with bringing your mom in okay that's, that's, you know. <laughs> well this was um that was a process and it was step by step um I started to just share normally, just like, you know, not thinking anything of it, some photos on my personal Facebook. Just like, hey, look at what we're doing. I got mom to play D&D. &D. And it's people started to react very favorably. And um, a friend of mine said, you know what, you should get this on Twitter, because I think a lot of people would be interested to see it. So I just said, all right, cool, I'll give it a, I'll give it a try. So I made a Twitter to, for just the D&D &D grandma. And uh I, f there, I took a, a short video during one of our games. It's one of my favorite videos ever. Um, it's in my feed somewhere if you ever go looking for it. Oh, yeah, it's... that's going up. <laughs> you get it? That's going on the end. Watch on the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen, where I snatch that feed and stick it right there, you know. <laughs> it's uh, my mother uh, in, in our older campaign. She casts Thunderwave. And the way she was able to do it, she got five of the bad guys, uh, five of the, the, the villains that were fighting in the area of effect, and she rolled bonkers she upcasted it to like third level and she rolled crazy damage so she did like well over 100 damage total and she's like yeah like puts her arms up and cheers. she's so happy and it's this really great moment when i shared that it was like overnight we went from 100 followers to 2000 because that video just got retweeted and retweeted and retweeted and i was like holy that was like my first moment that like i'm on to something here you know this is oh, yeah. pretty cool in that series of retweets, one of them was a writer for Geek and Sundry, who then emailed me and said, we would like to do an article on you. And I went, yes, sure, <laughs> uh, by all means. And um, when that happened, then it just the train took off. And that's kind of when I started thinking, not necessarily because I'm going to be famous. It was more of like, I think I'd like to put our story out there. I think I'd like to show that we are a perfect example that tabletop gaming can be for anybody. There is no oh, stereotype. Yeah. There is no, you know, that's yeah, yeah. the days of that are gone. This is for anyone with an imagination, a, pe a pencil and a set of dice can sit down and play our game. Oh yeah. No, I, uh, funny enough, um, this shirt that I'm wearing that my son made me has our, you know, the, the dice and the shield and everything. I love that. That's he, cool. He had a little summer, summer business and was doing stamping art type of thing. And, um, I have a picture on Facebook where I'm wearing this and I went to visit my late grandmother before she passed recently and um, I'm sitting with her and I'm talking with her you know and of course grandmas are like you know so what are you doing so I laid it all out for him like well grandma you know like I've been on this you know I've been doing this thing and it's podcasting what's that well you know this and this and this and going on now here's a woman that can recite our entire family history you know sharp as a tack you know right to the edge she was in her 80s and he's just getting older and older and um so i explained it and she's like oh you've always had a face for radio like that old joke and and then my <laughs> wife is like picture and she's laughing huh you know and i'm like yeah <laughs> that's funny grandma <laughs> like, <"Rrr." laughs> yeah. um and i got her outside of the prison old people's compound once <laughs> i smuggled her outside look grandma sunshine um <laughs> wonderful wonderful woman um and my last That's remaining it. grandparent and you know supportive of you know even if they have no idea what you're really talking about they're like that's good for you you know they're really <laughs> invested in you and they love you visiting so for me to see you and grandma's at the table which is something that's beyond a lot of us it's like dude so take it come on yeah yeah yeah, yeah you come on like take a moment <laughs> this guy you know like i said i don't think it's about exploitation i really think it's about you know the family and everything and the, you just kind of fell into this and that's really really mm -hmm. cool man i gotta say thank um, you so now you're making content um mm -hmm. where uh where can we find you on the web you are a podcast called the D D grandma 
We are a podcast. We we did consider making it a Twitch stream, but um, my mother absolutely torpedoed the idea of video. She said absolutely not. Uh, she agreed to. My, my mother's still very guarded with the whole social media thing. She's gotten a little better with letting us take photos, letting us take videos. She used to be very, very defensive. She didn't like it, but she's warm to it a little bit and. As long as it's just audio, she's okay with us putting content out there. She just doesn't want like a twit a live Twitch video. Oh no, video no, no, no! I I totally get it. Like even that photo with Graham and stuff. You know, they're all they're always like, "Wait, who's doing this? They found me." You know? <laughs> 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 yeah, she does always have that little like, eh, "Okay, take the picture, get it over uh, with." Yeah. Is that kind of a vibe? But uh, you can find me. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at D and D Grandma. Uh, our podcast is called the D and D Grandma and the Family That Games Together. Uh, that's D letter N D not ampersand it's D N D. Yeah. And, um, you could find us on oh, almost the only podcatcher that we're not on, I think is Spotify, but you can get us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google play, Podbean, okay. Castbox, and get us everywhere. Spreaker is one of the ones, one of the three I use and they can get you to Spotify, our heart radio, iTunes, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're nuts here. We we pay for three separate hosts and then go like everywhere as opposed to one, one people just like, we'll pick this host and, you know, get as much free spam as you can. But if okay. you're watching the video for this, uh, I've got his logo up. Lovely purple, um, the D20 hexagonal, octagonal, multigonal. Yeah, comet is fun. Um, <laughs> purple with V and D&D and &D and gold grandma. And then it says like a lovely handwritten script and the family that games together. <laughs> very, very. I mean, yeah. even his logo is charming. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> um, Designed by my lovely wife. Oh, again. Where is she? <laughs> Obviously, the woman behind the man is really. It's more like the guy. You're just like, I'm along for the ride. Grandma gets us this. The wife gets us this. I just the DM. <laughs> you know, I just make the stories, but they're the real. You know. No. I, yeah, I, I like I, to. I, I like think... to call my wife my creative director. She yeah. does anything logo related like that is her. No, I. My wife is far more involved even though not publicly, she's far more involved in this than you'd think. And a buddy of mine um, once described our marriage is Jeff is the balloon that's bouncing along the ceiling and Cheryl's two feet on the ground holding his string. <laughs> then, I like that. And then that's like, that's our marriage. That's like, you know, she's our, she's my censor. You know, I also, have my, <laughs> my son is involved as in like, he's our social media censor because I'm just like, if I say it or think it, it's like, that's going up there. A great idea. And he's like, dad, you can't say that. Well, why not? You sound very <laughs> condescending. No, I don't. And he's like, because my grammar and my spelling and my English are terrible. And it's, it's, not, it is my first language. I just never really bothered mastering it. And you know, communication <laughs> is worse, you know. So there's uh -huh. a there's a running joke with me that common is fun, because I never learned English properly. But anyway, um, back to you, sir. Um, when you're playing, you're DMing. <laughs> so as a DM, though, like when you got to play, do you have a favorite class, a favorite race, a favorite alignment, something that you possibly play when you had your chance when you were playing? Ooh, uh, well. In, an, in a separate game that we don't podcast, my wife DMs uh, for myself, her sister, and uh, three of our friends. And in that game, I'm playing a Hexblade Warlock, and I never realized how much fun a Hexblade Warlock is. Really? I, oh, man, that, that's, that's probably my favorite class up to this point. Uh, I'm having so much fun with that character. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. What? It used to be bar Barbarian was my favorite, and not, not anymore, man. I'm having so much fun with Warlock. Oh, okay. Um, so, again, the white, where is she? <laughs> Can we name her? Or what is your, you know? Oh, my, her name is Victoria. Victoria um, Vince. Okay. She, that yeah, she, she, she made it very clear she, she didn't feel like putting makeup on, so she doesn't want to be on video right now. Yeah, um, okay. Okay. Well, I did ask well, her. I did ask her to join me. She was like, no, you go have fun. <laughs> oh, oh, got to Honey! Watch this. Yeah. Honey! <laughs> See if I can summon <laughs> mine. We could, we could get Vince's wife, but we'll put in mine as you know for the attack of opportunity. I, again, um, we started this show, and a lot of people didn't get it. They're like, um, "We don't get this." Like it's, a, it's a gaming term. It's like, yeah, but mm -hmm. I'm full of stories. I can't remember them. And when I have a when I have a guest talking with me, I suddenly remember them, and I try really hard not to interrupt. But when you leave yourself <laughs> open, I'm going to take that attack of opportunity and stick in an anecdote. And now people are like, oh, yeah, we get it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. 
That's no, clever. I like that. Oh uh, yeah, it's, but again, we, back to you. No, no, no. We're gonna sub. Try and sub your wife for mine, honey. But um, <laughs> um, we'll see. It's probably gonna bang open the door and get really mad at me now. Uh, anyway, how long have you been creating um, content online now? Like you've been playing for X amount of time. Like how long has this been up and running? Uh, we do weekly episodes and we just put up, uh, well, I, I'm not done editing it yet, but so later today, episode 41, I believe is going up. So we've been doing this almost a year. Okay. We've been podcasting. I'm going to text her physic. I need you. If you, for those that know princess bride, um, <laughs> and you're doing very well, you're doing so well. Like I said, the positive feedback and you know, that type of thing keeps you going um now where do you actually uh tape everything as it were <laughs> my dining room <laughs> Yo, you're in the di okay okay yeah and you're, dining room table and you're on a yeti we're on a yeti it's a very low-tech operation like i don't even we don't have a mixer it's just one mic center of the table on a sponge to mask uh, <laughs> like the, the sound of people banging on the table that's it it is low tech and um we just we kind of realize like people while I do want the production value to be good and I, do, I want to be able to hear everything clearly and I want people to enjoy the show, we've kind of realized that what people gravitate toward the most about us is the fact that it's a family dynamic, mm. also gaming. So I try not to, I cut out filler when I'm editing, but I try not to cut out too much family banter because it's kind of our thing. That's what we do. Like, yeah, we're, we're gaming and we're playing D&D, &D, but we're also a family who will tease each other sometimes and there'll yeah, be some yeah. banter going on back and forth, especially when, when my mother starts taking shots at us. It's always hilarious. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so it's, it's a very loosey-goosey, relaxed, low-tech operation to record. No, that's... <clears throat> but, <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Um, Not at all. The, the amateur standpoint is... There she is. Huh? Well, I'm I'm talking to Vince from the D and D grandma, and his wife has strategically not been there, so I I've got to I got to summon you. We need a wife because he's his wife is all you know really the woman I should be talking to. Vince is just a puppet regime, and uh, <laughs> I just want it over here. I just <laughs> I just wanted you to wave something. She does exist. She holds my balloon. She does exist. I believe you. Just uh, oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I just, want to make sure, I just wanted to, to make sure that people don't know. I am here. The wife, the, the wife knows that. So uh, thanks, baby. The wife knows, she's just really confused. She goes over to the other side of the table and she's sitting at her mic. It's like, no, no, I don't need you on the show. I need you on the show, you know, for the moment. <laughs> but I will need you later when the guys show up. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Cheryl Ball, my lovely wife and executive producer. <laughs> so, there. Now, if I can do it. You can do it. Your turn. Come on, go get her. No, uh, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. <laughs> if you just get a hand away, there you go. We'll see how we can do. While we're continuing on our questions, but you never know what's going to happen here on Attack of Opportunity. <clears throat> um, so, what about conventions, fans, gatherings? Do you go to these? Is there is there a place like an outlet where people can meet you? You know, have you we actually stories? just got back from one. Uh, we went to, it was called Dralicon out in, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It was a startup. It's the first time that this con has ever happened. It was put together by a group called the Nerd Asylum, who are an amazing group of uh, tabletop gaming geeks. Find them. You can find them on Twitter at Nerd Asylum. A uh, great group of people. We went out there. It was a three-day convention, and we had an amazing time. And we met just a whole bunch of other gamers, a whole bunch of other content creators, other podcasts like us. And it was just three days of celebrating tabletop gaming. It was so awesome. We just had a great time with it. We met a lot of awesome people. Cool. Cool. Um, I'd love to do that. <laughs> I haven't done that. never been to a convention <laughs> in my life. I'd love to do that. We got, we got plans for September or some up here. Um, well... Uh, I can't. I've already been messaging all the Dralicon people, and I've been like, hashtag Dralicon 2020, hashtag Dralicon yeah, 2020. Going, going, yeah. they're, they're all like, yeah, we'd like to do this again. We'd like to make it a yearly thing. I'm like, you got to. We'll, we'll be there. So I've been saying, Dralicon 2020, make it happen. Yeah. And then, you, then you tweet Dralicon going, dude, I've drummed you all this business. You know, how about at least a, a limo for grandma when she comes, you know, pulls out? <laughs> do you take her? Does she go to those? No. This one she did not go to. This okay. was myself, uh, my wife Victoria, and our friend Kristen, who recently joined our family game because um, she's she's 
a friend, but she's a, she's a sister. Like she's yeah. just oh, yeah, she's yeah. One of the best family friends we have. And uh, she went out. It was the three of us who went out there. And that was hands down. The most common question was, oh, it's good to meet you. Where's grandma? Oh, that was oh, everyone. Whoa. Oh, where's the grandma? And yeah, I'm like, it's in the name, man. You're gonna. <laughs> I was like, she, I was like, she's 75 with a bad hip, and it's a 10 hour ride. Like, there's no way she was going to yeah. Indiana. But I'm like, do do something in Union County, New Jersey, and maybe well, we'll make it happen. <laughs> hey, let me make a suggestion, okay? Even if it's on your phone, even if you can tell grandma, it's like, okay, at 3 p.m., you know, someone at home or something has set you up with a Skype call, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's on your phone and you held it up to the masses, they would go nuts. And, <laughs> yeah, and then of I'm course sure. grandma you might scare us should go underground and <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no um so and um <laughs> see, I, see i don't know if that's like exploitation i i would find that a heartwarming moment to see a video of you you know just holding up grandma going here she is you know and have her going Vince, Vinny, is that you? You know, <laughs> is this on? You know, talking, with the big eyeball. I can't, you know, like, how is she in technology? <laughs> Does she stand up and lean over the mic and go, bingo! You know, or Yahtzee when the sixes come up? Because that's what I'm thinking. I'd love to see a meme with that shot you talk about where she did the fire, the thunder wave, you know? Uh -huh. And then the scene background slides behind her and it's like a bingo hall of this, you know? And it's like, doesn't matter <laughs> oh, what your funny. game is. Doesn't matter what your game is, you know? As long as you're having a good time, as long as you're rolling those sixes, you know, it'd be a great. Oh, that'd be funny. Uh, that, that's, very, yeah. that's very marketable. And I'm giving this away to you now, free. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just, I love the concept of it, the idea of it. And uh, I, um, I'd like to, <clears throat> I'd like to tone things down for a minute and okay. talk about something very dear and near to my heart. Uh, your merchandise. Do you have any? Where ah, can we find it? <laughs> working on. We are working on that. Actually, um, we just recently had some fan art commissioned. Uh, which we made into t-shirts, which real quick, if I can shameless plug. Yes. Yes. Hey, uh, is it the party? All, yeah. It's all the, 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 the characters in the party. My mother's character is right there. Okay. And then all the other characters. Where's grandma? Oh. That's, everybody wants to know, right? Which one's grandma? Right here. That's my mother's character right there. Okay. In the blue? In the blue. Yep. Oh, okay. Right in the center. It, it, the, uh, the, it is hard. It is hard to see them or whatever, but we'll have to, um, Maybe you can uh, send me a picture of this and I'll, and I'll put it up. I can do that. And we'll send, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll be tweeting it as well. This was done by, I want to make sure I get the, uh, the name, right. Mm -hmm. uh, at art carry. And that is uh, art. K a R E E is the artist we use for this. She did an amazing job. She was a wonderful artist. Check her out if you're in the looking for any commissions. Mm -hmm. And um, this might be uh, something that we might do as a Patreon giveaway because uh, we do have a Patreon with uh, Patreon backslash D and D Grandma, and we might use this as like a, a, a tier rewards to send out if you for as, as um. There you go. Yeah, I was like a reward there you go, for that. And gentlemen. The man Vince himself is willing to win you the shirt off his back. I mean, yeah, you're, you're gonna get more dedicated than that. <laughs> you're gonna more dedicated than that. Um, so I would like to ask you a couple personal questions. And again, it's just the idea that, like you said, you've got the family together and you have all these different ages, you know, that type of thing. Um, usually, gaming groups are extended family, friends, and then you get to the online gaming and you meet all kinds of people, all walks of life. So do you mind if we ask what you do normally for a living? I am a security manager, actually, for a uh, warehousing company. Oh, okay. That's what I do in life, yeah. And, <laughs> that's and, my day job. No, that's what, yeah. That, that maybe one day you could put down to, like, you know, do something like this. That'd be, oh, man, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, that's the dream, you know. That'd be the dream, yeah. Well, a lot of us believe that it's like, you know, people think you're like trying to claim the fame, and it's like, no, we just want somebody to pay the bills. <laughs> That's you know. yeah, basically, if I, if yeah. I hang out in my house with my dice and my friends, playing my game, and you know, and we'll share it with you, and you know, please support our Patreon or whatever. And you know, as long as you can break even, I mean, that, that's that's thrilling in itself. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm not looking to be a millionaire here, man. Yeah. I would just love to, yeah, you know, but, make ends meet doing this. That'd be great. Yeah, really. Um, anyway, again with the shameless and the plugs. So, what's your latest project? You've got this solid podcast. You're going to conventions, mm -hmm. doing maybe a live show type of thing, and, and you, you've got your favorite Comic Con now, or your favorite con, I should say. Sorry. Um, yeah. Is there anything on the horizon, um, like for a latest project, or you know, um, what's in for the future? 
Um, can we rent Grandma out and have her do cameos in other podcasts? I specifically very interested <laughs> in having you and yours. You know, I would. I, I'd love to have you and your wife and your grandma, like in our Star Wars podcast or in our Dice Before Dishonor, and play very distinctive NPCs and, and you know, and roll out. And, and then we say, hey, you know, from the so and so podcast, we actually do. Oh. That. We actually already do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Anytime. Um, as far as uh, another project goes, a long-term project right now, the podcast is a lot to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have an event coming up. I think it's going to be at the end of September. I don't know the date yet, but I'll be watch my Twitter for that. I'm going to be working with uh, Real Women of Gaming, who is a, a, a group out in Pennsylvania who I'm very good friends with. I've worked with them on several projects in the past where we are going to be live streaming a 12-hour D&D game for Extra Life where uh, the people watching it can make donations to the Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and or the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I forget. I know it's CHOP. I know it's C-H-O-P. I forget if the P is Philadelphia or Pennsylvania. But um, And your donations while we're playing can affect the game. Like you could send five dollars to give someone advantage. You could send character a healing potion. You can donate this much money to send a beholder to come kill us. You know things like oh, that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, like a chart. Five dollars plus one. All the way at the bottom it says five thousand. Jimmy gets a kidney. <laughs> it, could, it, could be, it could be in there. It could be in there. Wow. Too much. Um, Too much. Sorry. She. My, <laughs> my, my string puller left the room. <laughs> Uh, very direct, very direct. Sorry, go on. <clears throat> it's all good. Um, but yeah, so we did that uh, last year. I actually DM the game and I played the year before. So this year I will be a player again as one of the uh, Real Women of Gaming people will be DMing it. And uh, it's always been a great time. It's always been a great event. It's always been a success. So I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, that's going to be awesome. That's cool. Um, I'm, I'm at the bottom of my question list far too soon and I'm having such a great time talking with Vince. Uh, where, whereabouts are you? Like, I want to give a home address, but like, where you know, where do you live? Where do you game? What, what state? You know, what, what you I'm in New Jersey. You're in New um, Jersey. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, my mother is while we all live in Jersey. My mother is originally from New York. Those of you who couldn't tell that based on the New York accent you hear on the podcast. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> I'm like, oh wow, ma. <laughs> but uh, it comes out in me every now and then too. Certain words, I'll I'll hear it in myself. But uh, no, we are based in New Jersey, and um, oh, that'd be great. You, every... you should sneak in an NPC that has the accent, just so Grandma <laughs> in character can, can go. Are you from Jersey? I'm from Jersey. You know, like, <laughs> you from Jersey? I'm from Jersey. Sorry. No, it's fine. Uh... Uh... <laughs> I can see the hate mail coming out of the States right now. <laughs> what are you doing? You, bloody, you, you rotten little Canadian. Um, <laughs> no, our, our cast is half Canadian and half USA. We've got a guy in Portland. We've got a, a guy in Ohio. Uh, we've got people in Florida. Um, I've got people in um, Sykesville. I've got a bunch of Canadians in, are in around my hometown and that kind of thing. And um, there's a lot of back and forth. But I never find even like canon and america aren't so different as if you look at the scope of the world or whatever um but even interviewing uk gamers and, and that kind of thing i really don't find a lot of difference in the gamer mentality and it's a great way i find connecting with you know a common ground with other people no matter Absolutely. race height weight creed orientation whatever you know, absolutely you know um you meet interesting people and you already have something you love to talk about and when you go to a convention which i would love to go to or something or gaming shop you step into a room and you're looking around and i'm like one of us one of us you know the everybody in 100%. this room loves what i love to do you know and that, that this is this is the illusion then I quickly realized you have guys playing Magic the Gathering that wouldn't give you the time of day. And you get guys over here that spent their house mortgage on Warhammer minis. And then you get guys over here perusing the used thing because their their brain just can't comprehend new additions. And it's like, oh, can't we just all get along? You know, <laughs> guys, you know? Um, yeah, no, no, no. At the con we just got back from, none of that. I mean, it was all positive energy. And there was a lot of different types of gamers. It wasn't all D&D. There was a lot of people playing a lot of different things, but it was nothing but positive energy. It was just a really, really good time. And for the first time in my life, I played in a pickup D&D game. Um, there was an, there's another group uh, that was there who we connected with on Twitter called Ages of Ainur. 
Uh, you could find them at Ages of Einor, which Einor is A I N O R. And uh, it's another uh, gentleman who plays D&D with his mom. And um, they came to the con and he was walking around. He had a module in his hand. And he's like, I got a three hour game. Does anyone want to play? And we're like, sure. So the three of us and two people we never met before just sat down at a table and played a one shot. You know, a, a pick up D&D game. I've never done that before. Oh, that's so cool. uh, yeah. that was a blast. That was a blast. And it was just a ton of that. It was just, I really... I don't have time for negative energy in this hobby and in, in this other world. So I don't really, if people start arguing over which edition is the correct edition, uh, go away. Who play what you want. You play what yeah. you want. Why does, why do we have to be at each other's throats here? It's just to be positive energy. I like hearing about the editions that people started with and how they evolved. A lot of us actually started with what they called the red box and it's like, Oh, you're showing your age. <laughs> and it's like, no, we were excited back then to play that. And we're excited now to play this. Correct. Yeah, like, Currently, we're looking hard, strong, and fast at second edition Pathfinder, and there's a lot okay. of controversy. It was like for Pathfinder, it's like the fourth edition into fifth from third for D and D. You know, it's mm -hmm. just everyone's so up in arms. I can't believe so many websites where the disclaimer at the top of a chat room is, "Guys, you know, blah blah blah. Let's not keep going on about I like this, I hate this about you know about this new edition or the old edition or, or back and forth and what sucks or whatever. This you know this website, this Facebook page is about mm -hmm. ideas and for the GMs and for the players and stuff. It's like just the straight on hate debate of this and that. Um, and we're getting into it, but it doesn't mean we're going to give up first edition. You know why can't we yeah, play exactly. both? Why can't you just play whatever? I mean we've got uh, we recently interviewed Nicole Tuttle and we're discussing doing a fifth edition one shot. Because for us, some of the guys that were raised in second edition Forgotten Realms and played in the third edition Forgotten Realms, okay. you go 100 years later, you get into fourth edition, right? We could literally play those elves that have been around for 100 years because of the editions <laughs> span that timeline chronologically in the game. You know, it's like, yeah, I put fifth edition in front of me. Oh, is that her? Is that Victoria? Yeah, she snuck into the room, but she... <gasps> say hello! You don't want to say hi? Say hello, please. He's been asking for you. Come on, man. I, say I, hello. I... Even an arm wave on camera. We got to prove you exist. I brought my, tell her, I brought my wife, Grumpy, from downstairs because we couldn't get, there she is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I did the same thing to my wife yeah. 10 minutes ago to, to, to give him the courage. Totally to give him totally the courage. <laughs> I brought her in here. She leaned in so low to Vince or whatever. Hi. We heard so many great things and motivational things about you. The idea to bring in grandma. The like, just, can we just get you in the chair? Get, get, get rid of him. Yeah. We're done with him. We're oh, over. We're done with oh, him. Sure. We're done with him. No, no. Oh, are we doing this? Are we, can we do this? Are we doing this? Hi. Oh, together. Yes, yes, it is a fit. Squeeze in. There we go. Lovely. Okay, a little bit there. Can, can we can we hit you with a couple of quick questions? I mean, I've been yeah, we sure. we've had the this podcast photo bomb. My own my own crew have like okay. pop, popped into a call by mistake early. And they're like, oh, dude, we're on this other show, right? You know, we don't give them shit. Yeah. We're like, oh, so and so's here. Isn't this great? I'm texting. Him, I'm <laughs> going to kill you. You've made all my squares move on the frame. You know, I kind of, oh no. no, no. <laughs> but uh, hi. So we're now speaking with Victoria. Yes. Victoria. Okay. Yes. Uh, from the D and D grandma, and I understand. You know, he DMs in the show on the podcast, but you're his DM. And when the oh, lights yeah, when the yeah. lights go down, you know, and the camera's yeah. off, and the two are you alone, you know, type of thing. Um, I just find this so charming because, like I said, I game with my wife solo, and she uh -huh. recently is auditioning to join our cast, and she is she's definitely the money, and the censor, and all these things that a lot of people I just call her our executive producer, but she is so many things for our project and podcast that people just don't know, and she's very uh -huh. camera shy, and she's very you know that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, it's so great. Thank you so much for being on the show today. And we're going to no go back problem. to the top of the list of questions and we'll see how many we can oh. get out of you. So okay. how about you? How did you first know that you were a geek, a nerd, one of us, one of us? Um. So my father was a very big Star Trek fan. Ooh. Very, very big. And he also, when he was little, he watched um, Doctor Who. And growing up in my house, it was just number four is your favorite. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> which, <laughs> and, uh, no, which, which who? Because like same thing. When I was a little kid. We had the 70s yeah. Doctor Who with the big scarf, the big nose and the big uh -huh. wavy hair. That was our yep, Doctor that's Who. That's four. That, is yep, that four? That's four. Okay. Sorry. That's four. Uh, he's, cl he's clearly the best. Um, but 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, and honestly, it's funny because like I'll talk to other people and I'll say, you know, oh well, you know, Doctor Who reboot, and they're like, what is that? And I'm like. What's wrong with you? So like, I just grew up in that house where on Sundays we watched Doctor Who and we always had some sort of Star Trek on. And, you know, Superman, my father was a huge comic book geek. And, you know, he had tons of old school, what, Silver Age we did? Is that um, what it is? I think he has his Silver Age. Yeah, yes. so he actually recently gave them to the two of us because we're comic book people. So yeah. he actually gave yeah. us his whole collection. We have it upstairs. You inherited the but, legacy. Uh, Yes. So um, I don't know. It's always just been part of who it was, who I was. So I never really was shy. I, I never shied away from it. I was just like, oh, interesting, geeky stuff. That was about it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I totally get it. Uh, I was just explaining attack of opportunity. A concept is if you leave yourself open, I will definitely drop an anecdote. My old man was huge sci fi and like some fantasy. Yeah. And he was reading Clan of the Cave Bear. And um, uh, when Blade Runner came out, you know, he took us to see it. I remember being five years old and going to see the original Star Wars in 1977 because I was born in 72. Oh, wow. And it, all I remember is the ship, right? And then then when Spaceballs came out, my dad, and my yes. brother, and I are watching Spaceballs and they do this and we're just like, like yeah, <laughs> it's okay, endless so, ship, okay. you know, kind of thing. But similar as a, story to that, similar story to that, when, I, when the movie came out, I was five years old and I went out to the theater as a five-year-old with my family to go see Spaceballs and I'm sitting there and the ship came out and everyone's laughing and I'm like, mom, what's funny? I don't get it. And she's like, you'll understand later. <laughs> like, I didn't understand because I was just too young. But yeah, I think you just attack him up. You did, you I, did. That's why I made you. I did. Like, did she just do me? <laughs> I like this guy. This guy, this guy's quick. That is awesome. I wish more guests would do that. Shut me up. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> oh, no. I'm just so afraid of dead air. Um, uh, oh no! Oh, my old man. Like, um, like I guess I was explaining to Vince to try and get you caught up. Half our crew are Canadian, half are American. We do everything online because we can't get everybody. But I've recently tried to build a studio for a couple of Canadians, and the buggers don't show up. Um, I think my wife came up here and started auditioning out of pity because I like built this bedroom into a studio. Son's off to college. Uh, take the bedroom. You know that's the plan. Um, uh, so um, yeah, seventy scarf Doctor Who. And there's Hockey yeah. Night in Canada, and Dad would watch that, you know. But, okay. you know, there's Science International, and if they conflicted, it would be Science International or the Doctor Who or, you know, Star Trek. My cousins and Dad were huge Trekkies, and, you know, we were watching all the reruns of Kirk and everything. And then uh -huh. when Next Generation came out, and then I met my wife, and we both like Deep Space Nine because Cisco is the bomb. I'm telling you, like, Picard is awesome. Kirk, you know, number one, sure. But yeah. Cisco didn't take crap from anybody. I love, we love <laughs> DS9, man. Um, yeah. And then you get Janeway, and it's like just, just endless, you know, fun. I love Trek and I love Star Wars. And again, the people are like, yeah. are you a Trekkie? Do you like Star Wars? It's like, I like both. And they're like, no, really? No, I do. I really like yeah. both. Like, what, you know, what, is there a downside to more sci fi? You know? Yeah. And, um, and I don't understand, again, like how you have to choose between one or the other. And it's like, you know, like that was that's the beauty of being a geek is you you grab all of it. You like you grab all of it and you're unabashed about like the cool stuff that you like. Well, they were very the geek them of then was very protective of what was theirs because it was so precious, as it were. Um, now, <laughs> the only problem is like, what? What do you mean they canceled Dark Matter? That show was awesome. What do you mean they canceled Firefly? That's Star Wars for grown-ups. I mean, they defend a brothel in the second. Out. Like, what is wrong with you people? You know? Oh, yeah. so the best Pretty shows boring. are getting canceled left and right, you know? Um, yeah. But anyway, for you, was there a defining moment? I said, you, it's in the house, you're growing up with it. But was there a defining moment? Like, you move out and you're just like, this is, um, you know. Um, I would say... I guess Harry Potter, getting into Harry Potter as an adult, it was that was like, I guess the first thing that I chose that it wasn't just like on in the background or it was it wasn't like dad was putting on this movie. It was for me, it was Harry Potter. I sought it out. I went and I found it. I loved it. And then I brought it back to my family. I stacked up all the books and I said, dad must read this. Laura, my sister must yeah. read this. Everybody sit down, read it. You're going to love it. And I became an enormous Potterhead. That's, Absolutely. that's cool. My <laughs> wife and daughter and myself have read the books and, and even my son-in-law, who is a cast member, Jay Tamlin, uh, were so mad that the whole house elf revolution, the whole thing with Hermione going off the side was kind of canned in the movies. 
because we thought yeah. that was so cool. <laughs> free the little yeah. house elf, you know, kind of thing. Because they made a big deal about them being free and wearing their little um, rags and everything. But yep. um, so Harry Potter, the gateway drug to fantasy. Yeah. That's I, I gotta yeah. say, that's a first. Like we just say, oh, and Harry Potter in the '90s made geekdom cool, and then everyone came out of their yeah. geeky closets. You know, for the longest yeah, time, yeah. I said I was a closet geek, and they're like, what do you mean? It's like, well, you see me working in a unionized grocery store. I'm a green grocer by trade at the moment. Um, uh, and it's like, they come and they talk to me and mm -hmm. little old ladies and all this type of thing, you know, and, and come the hick, we're kind of in the north of the north here in Canada, a real hick okay. crowd or whatever. And then there's a college nearby and they call it the Sir Sanford Sandpit because they learn a lot of natural eco and right. But you still college kids that come in with all the t-shirts and all the pop culture, right? Yeah. And if I can get one of these guys alone in the aisle, I've slipped on a card going, you know, check out these podcasts you know yeah yeah <laughs> you know, like my card is like here hey, hey brother, on the black market hey brother have <laughs> yeah. you heard the good news you know this type of thing just slip them a card um yeah but unless someone said so you know what do you do when you're off work and i'm like oh i'm a huge geek i love i absolutely love movies and you get people talking to me about movies and stuff growing up out of the 80s i just I'm like, that type of thing and yeah. then i run into people going you should podcast or you should what it was just you know because i just light up right you get into it yeah. and it's like well if if you random citizen think i should i shall i will go forth and, you know, <laughs> okay. yeah. you know, or actually what i've gotten most is you should be a salesman you should be a salesman it's like yeah but i like uh, food so i can sell food i'm passionate about food and i get talking about local growers you know i like movies yeah i can't just go door to door and going would you like some detergent would you like you know i gotta be gotta be passionate yeah about it yeah and you two are obviously having a great time and very very passionate about the game the game involving your family you and now you're yes. sharing it with the world and that's a very unique yeah. marketing i mean <clears throat> charming angle um <laughs> but uh how long have no. you been playing specifically rpgs the old d20 comes out how long has that been going on or did we cover that i want to say i, I mean about... he played for about a year or so before me I've been in it for about five years. I don't, how long has fifth edition been out? Because I think I got into it right after fifth edition came out. I don't know. We played yeah. we played all the D and D editions. We got to fourth, and then we kind of went, eh. and then we discovered Pathfinder, three point oh, yeah, three point seven five, as it were. It went back to three point five because fourth was just wasn't for us. Some people like it. Yeah. Now I will defend a lot of people. Yeah. The usually is the hate on for fourth. I will descend, defend something in fourth edition that I personally really really liked was they had spell casting and they gave wizards a chance to like boom 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 like a fighter swinging a sword in combat. And they had spells. You're mm -hmm. one a day. You know if it was green, it was yeah. all the time. If it was a red card, it was like an encounter. Black was once a day, like your fireball. But then they had this ritualistic magic that you'd kind of see yeah. in a movie where somebody could pick up a book, read it, and like, and the campfire is clean. And even the bard or the bob or give it to the dog or the bar. pack bear, you know. Shall I carry yeah, your torch, actually... sir? No, here, just read this and clean the campsite, buddy. You're good. You know, and it, these these spell <laughs> rituals would take 10 minutes or whatever. And I thought, well, that's really cool. That's kind of like more of yeah. a open fantasy, generic -o kind of way of approaching spell casting as opposed to yeah. the rules of D&D. &D. And I really enjoyed that. And that's just kind of yeah. gone, right? They did do that in um, fifth edition. That is in fifth edition. Oh, in fifth it? edition, there are yeah, ones ritual that, casting's a thing. Yeah, oh, okay. there are there are certain spells. It's a, it's pretty popular for it, wizards and it druids. is it is limited though. It is, it is limited. very limited. It's not any spell. It's fifth like edition, um, yeah. <laughs> <for> <laughs> instance, like, um, uh, we just we just played a session yesterday and uh, yeah, but, 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 spoilers. No, I can say it. Okay. Our caster wanted to cast a specific spell, and she didn't want um, to waste the spell slot. So she said, if I get there early, can I sit down and take 10 minutes to do a ritual casting, and then I don't have to expend my spell slot, I can save it for later. And he was like, if you get there 10 minutes ahead of time, sure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she made it work. <laughs> was this like a battlefield? Like, they just run yeah, off? Yeah. Oh, it's like, I'm off to the battlefield, everyone. Dude. It's like, yeah. okay, you want us to come with you? Well, if you want to, you can come back in 10 minutes. Well, you know, if yeah. anyone accuses you of meta, remind them of a great scene in a Flash Arrow crossover where Flash and Arrow are like, Arrow's training Flash. And he's like, come at me. And Flash is like, are you serious? He's like, come at me. You're not going to touch me. So it's like, okay. So he pulls the bow. Flash comes running at him. He sees the arrow and he's just laughing. And all of a sudden, thunk, thunk, right in the back, two crossbows that were planted in the field 
you know, a day before, right? And he's like, lesson one, you didn't recon the battlefield and you have all the time in the world, shame on you. And the guy's like, oh my God, you shot me. <laughs> pulling, pulling out the arrows and he's like, lesson two, I vetted you. I know you can fast heal. I know I could do this to you. It will hurt, but you will heal. I haven't seriously damaged. Suck it up, yeah. newbie. Yeah. You know. Why am I three now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. We, we watch Arrow, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Constantine that died. And Matt Ryan coming over. We love that with, in the Legends of Tomorrow. Oh. The humor. You know, unicorns are evil. I, I, sorry, spoilers, but I'm, I'm telling you guys, <laughs> the season. <laughs> um, they kind of do what with the Marvel movies connections. Okay. And then yeah. they do crossovers. You start watching, and they even they've even looped in Supergirl. Because they'll do crossovers mm -hmm. there, um, and at a point we were watching all four shows plus the expanse. And now it's just kind of like, the more I get involved in this, the less time I have for you know that kind of thing. There's that's your sacrifice. A lot of people just think this is ace, you know. Oh, and it's Friday, and what are you doing? I'm watching the expanse. And what are you two doing? Grandma's coming over. We're playing D and D. There's a microphone up. It goes. And there's so many people don't realize there is a lot that you're doing for this in the week sacrificing oh, yeah. time blood sweat and tears guys oh, yeah. and that's why any any follow any comment uh any patreon support for these guys or myself um are so important because it's, it's not only an acknowledgement that someone sees what you're doing and likes it or whatever it it will perpetuate it forward it will open up possibilities for more content we were talking about what's wrong with star wars and star trek why can't we just love it all right mm -hmm. yeah absolutely now, now i know this is a limited resource for everybody but a lot of people can go a long way on a good word like you said the positive attitude um i for one turned one of our fans into a cast member she was such a delight and spammed comments all over our soundcloud not itunes or just this one and was following a bunch of our shows and was just so hilarious with her tones and oh my god and she'd like oh my god so and so did this this is great and and this guy's so shady you know this kind of thing anyway yeah. so i took it upon myself i reached out through the message boards and said um you know thank you so much on behalf of us this and this and this and no, no problem and everything and then we got this idea about a fan phone call where people could call us and we could you know talk to a fan um, and she pulls out this NT four hundred dollar Rhodes microphone. Hello, and I went, holy, where'd you get that? Oh, left over from YouTube. And anyway, we talked to her for like half an hour before we shot a show, and at the end of it, and I had spoken with her privately on on social media, and then got talking, and ended up being a real phone call and talking. And it was so charming. We're like, would you like to do some cameos? And she did, and then you know, now she's a regular cast member. Um, that's awesome great. yeah that's and, great. and then her computer died and she's on hiatus right now trying to work three jobs get a debt and work oh, computer yeah. but um there's a there's a movie with mark Wahlberg where he joins a band and he's in the audience and the the diva walks off and he gets up there and he just becomes one of them that kind of thing right oh rock band yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. so Rockstar. it kind of like we did this you know with a fan i've got another fan that's writing synopsis for our show i got another fan um that we in the star wars we pretend that Sven and the, the ski mask guys have gone to his house and kidnapped him. And then I call him as the mastermind going, hi, uh, we can't decide this ruling. We know you're familiar with Saga Edition Star Wars, you know. Um, could you give us the, you know, give us the straight and the skinny and you can have your family back. And he pretends to act all scared and you're like, this keeps happening to me, this type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and we have so much fun interacting one-on-one -on -one, you know like with these with these fans and everything because you guys the fans are everything to us and it's like you said it's not like well, i'm famous um one of my favorite movies is megamind and there's brad pitt as the superhero and there's like one guy i love you Megan, you know i love you and he's like i love you too random citizen you know and he points yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had surround sound uh and the old school one with the towers and i didn't know one of the speakers had cross wires so for the longest time, we thought the best joke was the one speaker over here would go, I love you, Mega Man. And he'd point the wrong way and go, I love you too, random citizen. We thought that was part of the movie. Like it was a joke and it was my botched sound system. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you kill yourself laughing. He just points the wrong way at like whoever. And the guy's over there. And we're like, then we watched it again years later. And it's like, oh, oh, well, well our version was better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So um, a lot of the questions that scroll down this list, Vince has already answered about the show, about you guys coming together, and he credited you quite a bit. Um, so getting down to maybe a personal bit at the end to finish off the show, 
Um, what do you do for a living, if you don't mind me asking? I work as kind of a, a customer service person. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really customer service. It's much more of a... Um, what is it called? I say sales support. Sales support. I have um, my company, we have a large sales office. Well, we have all over the country, but my sales office is in New York. So I work in New Jersey and I kind of support them in our factory. So anything that they need done, I run around and get it done. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah. I, I'd like to get that call. I'd, I'd like to be like, Customer service, D&D &D grandma, if she can cast them yeah. away and Yahtzee that stuff, I, you know, I, I'm sure I can help you. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, absolutely. That, that'd, be good. That, that'd be good. Um, So, yeah. guys, um, I w we're like approaching an hour. This is a record for these are 20. Oh, I, pro no. I promise people that it's like 20 to 40 minute ad interview, you know, part of your Sunday. You're in, you're out, you know, type of thing. We, we shanghaied my wife for 30 seconds who ran off. Um, and now we've got you. So, thank you guys so much for giving us thank the time you. today. Wow. It's great. Um, we will definitely, like I said, this is pre recorded episode, but we will live stream it. But it, for those who are going, why isn't it recorded? You know, why is it recorded? Why don't you live stream this stuff for technical issues? And because it's pre-recorded, when it hits the net, we are going to dig up those clips. And in, <laughs> in the comments, you'll see the artist that did the t-shirt and, you know, the credit where credit is due, guys. Yeah. But again, Victoria Vitz, thank you so much for oh, being on the show. Oh. We've been speaking with Victoria and her husband, Vin Diesel. Um, from <laughs> he's got, he definitely got the, he's got, he's got the hair. He's got the hair. He's got the hair and he's got the, you know, it's, it's all there, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of expected you to sit down. We were talking off the air, and I kind of expected I was very tempted to say, like, hello, I'm Vin Diesel, and this is what happens when you play too much D. &D. <laughs> but he actually did there's a Matt Mercer video with Vin Diesel playing D, &D with Matt Mercer, and it's called mm -hmm. D, D Diesel, you know. And yeah. Diesel, I love how they take Mercer out of the big king's chair and he's like squatting down the end of the table behind the screens, and then they've got they've got Diesel at the end of the big chair, and he's yeah. he's kind of like you know what are we doing like he's played dnd in the past he admitted it but yeah. he still has that hesitation of like you know mm, there's no script okay you know and mercer's just yeah. just bah, 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 and the thing and the witch is his own soul and back to <laughs> you and vince is, and diesel's just relying on the whole you know <laughs> it's kind yeah, of the <laughs> steely look yeah, the steel. he just sells it anyway yeah. Unfortunately, today's episode must come to an end. I've had such a great time. I should probably edit it down. I mean, I'm allowed to attack of opportunity a little bit, but I guess just uh, the end, right? I think we should just keep the end, right? Oh, uh, the last what ten minutes? We with her in it. With her, you know. We don't need to know about the show. It's fine. It's fine, guys. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show, and we will see you next time on Attack yes. of Opportunity. <laughs>